Dalaygo ng Ginoo, brothers and sisters. Glory be to the name of the Lord our God. Thank you for the Lord's favor upon us all. We give Him the praise, the honor, worship, the thanksgiving. Indeed, the Lord is good. We're done with year 2020. And today is our first Sunday for year 2021. So let me say Happy New Year to all of you. I believe with all my heart that this will be a good year, maybe best year for all of us. Hallelujah. Excited because the days are here. I mean, we're seeing all these things happening right before our eyes and also our ears as, our ears as we hear them. You know, prophecies are being fulfilled literally. Praise be to God. And so, as the Lord has been so good to all of us in the year 2020, we can trust Him that He, he is the same Lord who will continue to be good and gracious and generous and powerful and faithful on our behalf. And so, there is no need for us to fear or to worry. So let me share with you, for all of you, as we continue to walk with God, we walk with God since uh, we became followers of Jesus Christ. And uh, up until the whole year has been over, 2020, and we continue to walk with God every day of our lives waiting for his return or waiting for the moment when you know he will take us home hallelujah so that like the apostle paul when he said whether we live or whether we die we belong to the lord and so for our message some will call this as a new year New Year's message. We'll take this from Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi in chapter 1, beginning with verse 27. We'll just go through these verses, starting with verse 27 up to the last verse of this chapter. It's good to remember that this letter was written by Paul when he was in prison during his first imprisonment because of preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is one of the so-called prison letters. Letter that was written inside the prison. This one was one letter and several other letters. And we all know that a prisoner's life is a difficult life. You do not have freedom. You are not at liberty in what to do. There's always guards roaming around, watching every move that you make. So many other things. Your family members cannot visit you as much as they want. Neither can you go out. You're inside. You're confined inside the walls of the prison and this was what happened to Paul and in those days prison cells were even more difficult to live with but Paul by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ was able to to make it because of the abiding presence of the Lord in his life so this is what he has to say to encourage the Christians, that they will continue to lead their lives for the glory of Jesus. So here is what it says in this verse, Philippians 1 verse 27, whatever happens, if you may, you can use this as the title of this message. And for the rest of this year, whatever happens, we are, the, we are the people who committed already to walk with God, whatever happens. Praise God. 
Can anyone say amen right there? Whatever happens, we are the people already committed to walk with God and live our life for His glory and for His honor. Amen. And so Paul said, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. In a way, Paul was saying, whatever happens, continue walking with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Whether it's sunshine or rain, whether it's winter or summer or autumn or, or uh, you know, whatever season in life. Because seasons, they do change all the time. But whatever are the seasons we find ourselves in, we have to continue walking with God. We have to continue behaving as His people, conducting ourselves in a manner that is worthy of the gospel of Christ, in a manner that's pleasing and honoring to the Lord who loved us and saved us. Amen. Wherever we may be, we will continue to walk with God. Whatever we may be going through, difficulties and hardships we are bound and committed to live our lives worthy of the gospel of christ and then paul continues by saying then whether i come and see you or only hear about you in my absence because it is important that as believers we do not behave only because somebody is watching us but we behave even when no one is watching us just like in the case of paul here he was encouraging the christians to behave consistently in the same manner whether paul was present or paul was absent you know they have a saying that when the cat is away, the mouse will play. And sometimes that happens to some Christians, you know, when their leader is not with them or when the pastor is not watching them. Then they behave just like the rest of the people of the world. And then when they are with the pastor, or let's say it's a Sunday and they are in the church, they behave differently compared to when they're out there in the world. But Paul was reminding them, whether he is present and sees them in prison or only hear about them because he was absent, he was far away doing the work of the Lord in other places, yet he expects them to continue behaving and living their lives as worthy of the gospel. Whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit. He expects them to stand firm. Can you say the word firm? Firm means strong. Amen. Cannot be shaken not wavering, but firm and consistent. I will know that you stand firm in one spirit. Meaning he is expecting them to do that, to stand firm and be consistent as one before the Lord. Hallelujah. We have to take this for the rest of this year because we do not know what will happen this year. In 2021, you know, we do not know whether the pandemic will be over and we will all return to our former way of life. 
all this will continue and even become worse or someone will come out from nowhere and take advantage of the situation for his own agenda and impose his will upon mankind. We don't know. We don't know how nations will recover from these difficult times, especially about the economy. Some are saying it will take two years for the economy to recover. Others are saying more than two years. We do not know. But whatever happens, we are committed to conduct ourselves, live our lives for the glory of the Lord, walk with Him consistently and faithfully, standing firm in one spirit. And then the last line of the verse, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. The word contending means fighting. You are still, you're there out in the battlefield. You're not running away from the fight. You are not hiding. You're not cowering in fear. But you are there. You can imagine the portrait of a soldier during the time of the Apostle Paul. He describes it in Ephesians 6. You know, the helmet, he has a breastplate, he has a belt, belt of truth, he has a shield and the sword, and his feet is properly covered with a sandal or a shoes that's sturdy enough to survive in the battle. And then he goes out there fighting and contending and facing whoever will be the enemy that will fight with him. He has no plans of turning around and running away. But he is committed to stand firm and fight. There are several messages of the same nature from the Bible about contending for the faith or fighting the faith, fighting in faith. One is in Jude verse 3. In this letter, the apostle says, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. Contend for the faith or fight for the faith. The idea is that you will not give up the faith. You will not abandon it or throw it out the window. But instead, you will hold onto it until the last breath of your life. Or as in the case of believers, until the return of Jesus Christ. Paul has the same thing to say in several of his letters, in, like for example in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. This is Paul again saying to his son Timothy, he says, Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by following them, you may fight the good fight. You may fight the good fight and then the next verse says, in verse 19, holding on to faith. Holding on to faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected this and so have shipwrecked their faith. Meaning there were other Christians who rejected the teachings of the Apostle Paul and then, as a consequence, their faith suffered shipwreck or their faith were destroyed. They lost their faith because they did not take the responsibility of holding on to that faith, consenting for that faith. Also in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, Paul repeated 
the thought here when he said, for the fight, the good fight of the faith. Again, he was telling this to Timothy, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Because eternal life is the direct byproduct of faith in Christ Jesus. That is why you have to fight the good fight of the faith. You have a responsibility to do that as a believer and a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's not only that God is fighting with you, but you are also taking it unto yourself a responsibility to fight the good fight of faith and taking hold of the eternal life. To which you were called. I'm just reading actually these verses by dear brothers and sisters and expanding it a little bit. But even without my comments, it is very simple and easy to understand that Paul was giving the Christians, not only in Philippi but also in other cities, including personal friends and disciples of Paul, the idea of them having the responsibility to contend for the faith, to stand firm, to hold onto what they have received from the Lord. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, the writer of this book has the same idea. He says here, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Hold firmly to the faith we profess. Hawiri o lingon o higpit kaayo ang pagtuo nga imong gisugid o pagtuo nga imong nabatunan. Let's hold firmly to the faith we profess. Firmly means tightly. The opposite of that is loosely. When you hold on to something loosely, you will easily lose them. But when you hold on to something firmly and tightly, most likely it will not be taken away, cannot be taken away from you. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 11, Jesus himself was saying or talking here, he says, I am coming soon. Hallelujah. Amen. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. What is Jesus referring to here? Hold on to what you have. Of course, faith, as mentioned in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. But he was reminding his people, his followers, his disciples, that even though they're going through difficult, difficult times, Hallelujah. Many of them are losing their lives because they were martyred for Jesus. And yet, he gave them an inspiration. Hallelujah. By telling them, I'm coming soon. Meaning your suffering will not be long anymore because I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when you look at the situation around us, many are many Bible scholars and uh, especially those with prophetic insights are telling us and reminding us that the return of Jesus is getting really closer and closer by the moment. Hallelujah. As if we can smell him. As if he is now standing at the very doors. Hallelujah. And we are all excited because we know that when he comes, we will meet with him and he will take us unto himself. And yet, meanwhile, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to live our lives in accordance with his will and with his purpose. One last verse along this thought. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. This one is the testimony of the Apostle Paul. Himself. He says, I have fought the good fight. 
I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. So the guy who told the Christians in Philippi to contend for the faith is he himself fighting it out in faith and fighting with victory. Fighting up until the finish line. Never giving up. Never tiring. Hallelujah. And he was able to say with certainty, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. I pray that all of us, all of us, all of you who are listening to me out there right now, all of us can say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Or you will say, I am fighting the good fight. I am finishing this race. And I will keep the faith. By the grace of Jesus and by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because in your heart and in your mind, you do not give any place to the idea of giving up to the thought of slowing down, to the temptation of throwing away your faith because you are firmly convinced, 100% convinced that this is the right thing to do and the right thing to do is to contend for that faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever happens, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Let's go back to Philippians 1 verse uh, 27. I will read now in verse 28. Without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. As we contend for the faith, as we walk with Jesus, as we live our lives in a manner that's worthy of the gospel that's honoring the Lord, we are not to be frightened. Paul was telling them without being frightened in any way. So many people all across the globe have been living in fear, in worry, in anxiety. They can hardly sleep. They're not enjoying their life anymore. Because of the problems that they know about, especially the pandemic. I know it's not as easy as it used to be. Our freedom has been curtailed. Our movements have been controlled. Our incomes has been affected. So many people, their incomes has been affected. And yet, we are not to be frightened in any way, especially by those who oppose the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we all know that the world is not favorable and sympathetic to the gospel of Jesus Christ as a whole. Although there are thousands and thousands of people at the same time who are opening their minds and their hearts to the gospel of Jesus Christ, especially in hard-pressed areas, in restricted countries, where life is difficult. And because life is difficult, people has the tendency to cry out sincerely on a God for help and intervention. And God is honoring them in their sincere faith and in their sincere prayers. That is why. And yet, as a whole, the world is not inclined towards the gospel. In fact, the world, especially in modern countries, in, in Europe, in, in America, in United States, the gospel is not as it used to be being welcomed. You know? There is a persecution <clears throat> that's happening among those 
that profess their faith in Christ Jesus. As if it's like a vice grip, you know? Hinay-hinay silang ipit. Their freedoms are curtailed. And their rights halos dili na yatag sa ilaha. And yet, we can also see a band of men and women who are rising up and not being frightened in any way. And these are those that have tightened their relationship with Jesus Christ. These are those who have sought His presence day and night through prayer and through reading and meditating of the Word. These are those who have disciplined themselves, no longer hearing the voice of the world, but only giving their ears to the voice of the Spirit in prayer and in the Word. Worshipping during their vacant times. Praising God while they are working out there in the fields or in factories or wherever they are. Because they take their responsibility upon themselves to live a godly and righteous life. They prepare their minds and their hearts and not to be afraid. Even if it would mean that their life will be taken away from them. They are committed to follow the Lord. Praise God. Because in the scripture, there's always a remnant of the people of God that does not bow down to the gods of this world. We read that during the time of Elijah. When Elijah was complaining before God how that he was, because Elijah thought that he was the only one left that remained true and faithful to God. Whereas the rest of the nation of Israel and even the prophets of God has abandoned him. And yet God reminded Elijah, No, Elijah, I want to tell you that there's still 7,000 more prophets whose lips did not kiss the idols of Baal. Neither their knees bent to worship him. Meaning there's still 7,000 out there that Elijah did not know. Elijah did not meet. But they were out there scattered, living a difficult life, and yet at the same time remaining true and faithful to the God that they know. There's always a remnant, my brothers and sisters. And so even today, even as there will be large-scale backsliding that's happening, even religious denominations or in Christ, so-called Christian denominations, institutions that for many, many years have been, you know, walking faithfully unto the Lord, suddenly they will take a turn to the left or to the right, no longer will walk according to the tenets that once before they fought for. They change just like that. They become frightened maybe. And it will hap it's happening and it will continue to happen. Prominent men that we know of that previously were also out there passionately proclaiming the gospel, testifying about their faith, writing books, broadcasting through media. And yet something will happen. And the next moment you will be shocked because you will hear them speaking. And telling the world that they have changed their faith. A little bit depressing for many. And yet for those who belong to the remnant. They will not be frightened in any way. They will continue to walk with God and serve Him. And live with Him and for Him faithfully. They will continue to honor the word of the Lord. They will continue to tighten the belt and just serve God with gladness and with peace in their hearts. So Paul was telling them, without being frightened in any way, 
by those who oppose you. There are two things very certain here in the next line in verse 28 that Paul talks about. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will be destroyed, you will be saved. How about that? They means referring to the people that did not serve God. Instead, they were opposing God, opposing the business of God, opposing the plan of God, opposing the work of God. But for those that will stand firm and remain faithful to the Lord, they will be saved. They will be destroyed, you will be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. That is one thing that's certain. Amen. We are certain that God will save us. He will not leave us nor forsake us. That's already what he promised. Let me read that, that particular verse for all of us today. Hebrews chapter 13. It's in verse number 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. What did God say? Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid what man can do to me. What can man do to me? Because God has spoken you can also speak in the same manner, with confidence. Not confident on your own self, but confidence on what God has spoken. Because God will never tell a lie. Hallelujah. And because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. How about posing for a moment right where you are as you're listening to me, and say the line, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. You say that repeatedly to yourself until you become convinced in the inside of you that God is with you and for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Amen. That is why even though we do not know what's going to happen next year, the details, you know, and there is no need for us to know. Some people, they would resort to, you know, reading horoscopes, you know, and going to some people who claims to have the ability to read writings on their palms because they want to know what is their future. There is no need. In fact, the Bible forbids such practices, you know. Instead, just trust in the goodness of God. Just rely in His faithfulness. Stand firm. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, just rejoice and have the confidence that the Lord who said He will never leave us nor forsake us will keep His word. Now, let's go back to Philippians 1. In verse 29 now, Paul has this to say. Very important. I would encourage you if you have a literal Bible, you underline these verses I'm sharing with you today. Philippians 1 verse 29, For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for Him. Hallelujah. You know many Christians, they escape this verse, especially the last line of the verse also to suffer for him you know because we have been bombarded lately you know for the last two three two three decades you know across the world we've been bombarded with positive you know positivity you know you you just exercise your faith and you will have every good thing in life you know you don't need to suffer you know things like those yeah I'm not saying I do not believe in those things. I believe. But you know when you overstretch a truth, eh? when you stretch a truth beyond, <laughs> it will become error. 
Ano? It has a breaking point. That's why I'm saying, you overemphasize. You know? Because in Scripture, it is always balanced in Scripture. Ah. So here, it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for Him. And the guy who was writing this himself was suffering all along. In fact, when he wrote this letter, he was inside prison, suffering for the very faith that he was fighting for. Amen. So do not be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. My point is when your faith blesses you with good things, may rejoice in the Lord. But when your faith allows you to go through suffering, rejoice the same. Amen. Do not complain. Do not murmur. Do not question the wisdom and the sovereignty of God over your life. But you have an obligation to keep going. That's why verse 27, the starting point of our verse, the Apostle Paul says, whatever happens. <laughs> because it can go to the left or it can go to the right. We're not sure. We're not God. But whatever happens, keep going. Keep holding on to the faith. Keep believing. Keep following. Keep serving Him. And Paul's main concern, I believe here, is that the Christians will continue to do two things that we already know about and keep on talking about for the last how many weeks and how many months. And this is number one, to live our life for Jesus. That's why the Holy Spirit was given, because the Holy Spirit will help us live that life day by day, moment by moment. And secondly, to do the works of Jesus or do the mission of Jesus or fulfill the ministry of Jesus. Whatever will happen, we cannot reneage on these two things. Whatever will happen, we have to continue living our life for Jesus and continue doing the ministry of Jesus. Whether we eat or whether we go hungry, whether we can buy our clothes or no longer can buy our clothes, whether we ride or whether we walk, whether we become fat or we grow thin or grow whatever <laughs> happens, we're committed to walk with Jesus, live his life, and do his work to be used by him. And so for this year, my dear brothers and sisters, 2021, we're all excited because it is in trying moments that the glory of Jesus will be seen. You know, in the book of Exodus, we're told about the people of God way back when they were still in uh, Egypt. How that the Egyptians, especially the new Pharaoh that took over after the old Pharaoh has died, the one that was friendly and sympathetic to the Israelite people, the new Pharaoh did not honor the covenant or the agreement with the Israelite people. So they start, he started to persecute the Israelites. And yet, this is what we are told about the Israelites. In Exodus chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Python and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But... The more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. Imagine that. Imagine that. The purpose of the Egyptians, why they were oppressing them, was to break the resistance or to break their faith, to destroy their hope in the God that has chosen them, of whom they worship of whom they covenanted with. That's what, that was their purpose. And yet, the more they oppressed the Israelite people, the more they multiplied and spread. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the nature of the real, genuine God's people. The genuine God, the, the people of God who are real and genuine, these are their, their, their nature and their character. The more life is difficult, the more they multiply. The more they become powerful, 
the more they become prayerful, the more they become full of faith and confidence. They do not give up. They do not run away. They continue doing the things they know they need to do and they multiply and they spread and they increase. That's exactly what you will know of the people of God. Like you hear about stories in, in restricted countries like China, you know, where gospel was, was limited in its freedom to spread, especially during the Cultural Revolution after the communists took over China. They tried to stamp out the Christians in China. They were expecting that in a few months, there will not a single Christian left in China. They took away the churches, burned it, tear, tore them down, or turned them into um, museums or bodegas or whatever. Arrested the Christian leaders and throw them into concentration camps, libo camps. Many of them perished, died there. You know, and yet Christians just continue to go on. In fact, for the last how many years? There's an ongoing revival in China and Christians continue to grow. Today, there's about 130 to 150 million believers in China. No church buildings, no church buildings, no visible celebrity-like leaders with all the titles and uniforms, with bodyguards who walk along with them. No. <laughs> the Christians, they, could, they, they just live the simplicity of what it means to follow Jesus and focused on two things. Live the life of Jesus and do the works of Jesus. Do the ministry of Jesus. And this is what Paul is reminding us. And this is what I am reminding all of us, including myself for the rest of 2021. Whatever happens, whatever may happen, we are committed to live this life for Jesus and committed to do the works of Jesus. Let me pray for all of us today. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your favor, O Lord, upon us all. Thank you, O Lord, that your grace will continue to be poured out upon your people. We all receive one blessing after another out of the fullness of God's grace. John 1 verse 16. Salamat kay dear Lord. You have been good to us. In the past month, months, Lord, past year, since the pandemic had begun, we have seen how your favors increased upon your, your people, upon DCC people. And yet, O oh Lord, as we enter this new year, 2021, we do not know what will happen. And yet we have a direct word, O oh Lord, from you today, from this word, from this passage, that whatever will happen, we will conduct our lives, our manner of our lives, according to the call of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we will continue to commit to spread the good news of Jesus. Live our lives as a testimony that the gospel is powerful and do the works of Jesus. We will be even more aggressive in spreading the good news. Hallelujah. We will continue to pray every night and every day, O oh God. Hallelujah. Tightening, O oh Lord God, and firming up Oh Lord, our connection with you to the Holy Spirit and to the Word. Hallelujah. We will welcome your gracious Word as well as your presence that will bring comfort and joy and strength to us. And yet at the same time, O oh Lord, hallelujah, we will continue to do the works that you have assigned us to do for the glory of Jesus and the honor of our Father. Salamat, o Lord. I pray that your people will continue to walk with you, O Lord, whatever will happen. Hallelujah. Pray that your people, Lord God, will be filled with peace and joy and gladness, filled with faith, filled with hope, Lord God. Hallelujah. Filled with righteousness, O Lord. I pray that your presence, Lord God, will become visible because that's what you promised. You will you will show difference between those that serve God and those that do not. And we will expect that it will, O Lord God, continue to happen. Thank you, dear Lord. We give you the glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen.